People who don't know what the world is don't know where they are, and people who don't know why the world exists don't know who they are or what the world is. A lesson from the first century for people who want to learn and get better. It's a gentle drop in your lap. I do this with no fear at all, knowing that it will completely turn your life upside down and bring you health, wealth, success, and happiness, as long as you understand and accept it. Keep in mind that TNT is a very high explosive, so be careful when you handle it. Over the ages, those who tried to abuse its power have been killed by it. Because of this, be very careful that it is only used for good. Do not use it wrong. You can show it with the Bible's lessons, some well-known science rules, and finally, just plain common sense. You should read the facts I give you and decide for yourself if they are true. Some of you may only see the spiritual side, while others may see the science facts and still others may just see it as a useful tool to help them succeed. Even so, a lot of people know the truth, and those of you who are willing to open your minds will see a flood of white light. I owe a lot to an old friend who is an expert on X-ray and high-frequency electrical equipment. When I was a kid playing with electricity, he told me about the first piece of powerful TNT I had in my pocket. I didn't know what it was or why it was there back then, but luckily it's been there all these years. I now understand why he didn't make me understand what it was. He believed in me and knew I would accept it when I was ready. It has taken almost 30 years, and I have been looking for the key by riding my sword up and down the roads. Always feel in your pocket. I had some in mind for the mere purpose of reaching. However, I now have a strong grip on it, and I will kindly share it. I know that if you use it wisely, it will clear the way for you to walk the path you've always wanted to take. I worked for a newspaper for a long time and was often behind the scenes. I talked to and met great people and recorded interviews with famous people. Of course, I studied them and tried to figure out what makes them special, but I couldn't figure it out. Then there was the war, and I didn't understand why other people were making success while my own goals seemed to be getting in the way. I learned that I could sleep in the mud, eat moldy bread, and still laugh about it during the war. Remember what I learned because this is part of my TNT. Giving old man fear a solar plexus blow helped me, and I think it will help you too if you want to find a great way to make money. I read a lot of so-called success books, but they didn't help me at all. I did the same thing with books on psychology and philosophy, but the big secret was always just around the corner. I joined secret social groups in the hopes of finding what I was looking for, but the secret was in every book, in the great orders, everywhere, and right under my nose. It was like the TNT in my pocket, but I didn't do it because of something. You need to figure out what is stopping you. It's there if you don't get it from TNA. If you can't find it in print, look between the lines. I did my best to give it to you. After the war, I joined an investment banking group that worked all along the coast. Over the years, I had a big dream, as did thousands of other business people, only to find that the air castles I built were built on shaky ground. I was scared, though, because something that turned the world upside down financially destroyed all of my air castles. I got lost in the fog, and every time I turned, something hit me. Are you scared? The more I worked for the organization, the more duties I had. Our business was in trouble because of the changes in the world economy, and many people were harsh because they didn't understand the disaster that had hit every business. This caused a lot of stress and kept people up at night many times. I was hating going to work because I thought each day would bring more pain. Things kept getting worse over the next few weeks. I had no idea what was going on. I had thought about leaving the business several times, and in late June 1931, I finally decided to do it. When I told one of the women I had been seeing for years about it, she looked at me with disapproval. I tried to sleep again that night but couldn't. I paced the floor for a long time. When all of a sudden, around 3.30 in the morning, I stopped and sat down. I was looking at myself straight on. When I felt like running away, I could leave the others to handle things on their own, or I could stay and do my part, which I knew was my job. Someone had taught me that right is right, it's always been right, it can't be otherwise, and I almost heard myself say it out loud. All of a sudden, it looked like something was happening. A voice asked me, What have you been looking for all these years? What were you taught? What did you learn? Where are you going? Where have you been? Where are you going? 
I jumped to my feet and cried, I know it. I've got it now. It's the secret. That's what they tried to teach you. It's also the royal secret. Something in the air told me that I would find those exact words in a book that had been given to me many years before and that I had tried to read. Albert Pike wrote it. He was a great man who was a thinker, an artist, and a teacher. I quickly grabbed it off the shelf and quickly read through the pages. The words were there, and I understood right away. I now have the key. I could see a wide, smooth highway and a perfect flood of stunningly beautiful light at the end of it. You are now on that road. What a fool you've been. They tried to teach you and help you, but you closed your mind, thinking that only you could find the right path and stay on it. Open your mind. I was so happy that I almost passed out. All of my fears and problems had gone away. From then on I knew I was right and that everything would go well for me. It was different in the office that day because I slept like a baby. The heavy black clouds that were above us started to lift. It happened, and I told the woman with the accusatory eyes. She smiled, like she knew what had happened. I will never be able to thank her enough for helping me get back on track. All of us are born with the ability to know right from wrong and the ability to achieve, but some of us have to run headlong into a stone wall and smash ourselves to pieces before we really know what it's all about, said a wise man. I hit the wall with a great crash, and it was the best thing that got me through life. Many people who saw the change wanted to know what happened. I told a few close friends because I knew it would help. It's yours all. The book has been used by thousands of people, businesses, and groups since I found this idea. Along with this, I have spoken and taught in person and over the radio to many more thousands of people, and I am thrilled to say that everyone who understood and used the principles and methods described here had amazing results. Our organization's mood was at an all-time low. Everyone was scared and down on themselves. Because of how things were going, we had to turn around. Because I knew it was right, it was my job to do everything I could to help the other guy. It was hard for me to figure out how to help them at first, but when I used my own way to access my mind, an inner voice told me to talk to them. What's right is right. However, I told myself, I can prove that I am right. And for the next week, I spent all of my awake time going over the books I had studied over the years. The Bible, of course, came first. Next came studies in yogiism, the philosophies of ancient Greek and Roman masters, and the philosophies of teachers and students today. I thought about Marcus Aurelius Antoninus's exercises again and read Hudson's Law of Psychic Phenomena again. This is another book, and the main idea of it was written by the great Dr. Hayden Rochester. Once more I looked over my physics, electricity, and light vibrations books and found that not only was I right, as I had suspected, but that all of them were based on the same basic ideas. I read a lot of psychology books again and again and kept coming across the same story. After that, I changed the name to Snippets, and sure enough, things started to move. I've thought over and over that all men and women who use this power are showmen, or headliners, as we used to call them in the newspaper business, those who made the front page. There is something that makes them throw away the bushel basket they hide their heads under and rise above the ordinary. You must agree with me that they may have a lot of power, but they will never have a place in the Hall of Fame if they don't become big names. That doesn't mean they're trying to get attention from the press, since some of them are very shy and are showmen by nature. Some people do strange things or use odd tools to make themselves stand out from other people. Some of them smile in a way that gets things done. Others frown. And still others have a charm about them. Sideburns, whiskers, and long hair all play a part. Others wear skirts that flow and unique clothes. Some flair is shown by their red neckties, while others is shown by their fake mustaches. What is your niche? There are many people who are good at business, government, the arts, oratory, and the science of war, but they all stand out in the calcium. Headliners, there are a lot of them. A few famous people from history and present day that come to mind are Cromwell, Edgar Allan Poe, Benjamin Franklin, Alexander Hamilton, Bismarck, Graham Bell, General Grant, Cecil Rhodes, T. Barnum, Clements, Kitchener, Woodrow Wilson, Joffrey, Sir Thomas Lipton, Falk, Mussolini, Winston Churchill, Charles E. Hughes, Lloyd George, Mahatma Gandhi, 
Ramsey McDonald, and Will Rogers. They have been and still are in all walks of life. I'm sure Gandhi uses this power, and I believe he is the most important person in the world right now. Many shots of him show him dressed in modern, polite clothes, but today and for several years he has worn a loincloth, big glasses, and kept his hair cut short. I don't have the right to say that Gandhi changed this outfit for a specific reason, but I think he did it to bring attention to himself for India's cause. I won't try to explain why people who use this power are showmen. You have to figure that out on your own. Remember, you can't hide a city on a hill, and people don't light a lamp and hide it under a basket. Once more, only people who are ready to accept them can know the great truths of life. Once more, the thousands of people who use the power for bad have caused their own deaths. Nothing more or less than what we put into life comes back to us. For every good thought, helpful action, and act of kindness we give, we receive the same in return. What a man sows, that he will also reap. Caution signs with detonating caps are now out. Be careful. A man is truly great when he has an honest goal in life that is based on a fair assessment of himself and everything else, regular self-examination, and a firm commitment to doing what he knows is right, without worrying about what other people think or say or whether they do or don't do. What he thinks, says, and does. Mark Antoninus, Marcus Aurelius. Thousands know millions of people are looking for the key to health, wealth, happiness, satisfaction, and a way out of their issues. Many men and women have had the secret and used the power throughout history. I'm sure you can too if you think about, accept, and use the ideas in this article. What do you need? Where do you want to go? A very old story. I'll tell you another old story. Two guys were sleeping on a ditch in Mississippi. One of them sighed, stretched his arms, and yawned, Gee, I wish I had a million watermelons. The other man asked, Ralph, if you had a million watermelons, would you give me half of them? No, sir. Would you give me a quarter of them? No, I wouldn't give you a quarter of them. Ralph, if you had a million watermelons, wouldn't you give me even 10% of them? No, sir, I wouldn't give you 10% of them. Well, wouldn't you give me one bad watermelon? Say, Sam, I wouldn't give you a, I know that some people will laugh. There have always been scoffers. Scoffers, on the other hand, never get anywhere in life. Just feel bad for the person who is doing or going forward, because they have to jump over or go around them. And you'll see that everything in it is true. A lot of people are envious of the person who seems to be getting ahead and making a lot of money. Did you ever try to find out why? Positive things that people have ever done have come from inside them. Envy is bad. Do. It's possible for everyone to reach their goals if they keep my saying in mind. If you believe it, it's so. And the old proverb, where there's a will, there's a way. This means that you need to have faith, belief, and willpower working all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And I promise that if it's done, you will leave the people around you behind as quickly as high-frequency electrical shocks move through the air. Don't say anything right now. Think about what planned advertising is. There is nothing else but a well-thought-out plan to get you to believe. It worked during the war. And if you're fully aware of what's going on around you, you know that it's still working in every area of life today, just like it did thousands of years ago and always will. When you read the newspaper or listen to the radio, you'll remember my main point. You'll understand that all of these talks our leaders and top executives give us on a daily basis are meant to make us believe. Those guys know how to do it. Stop. Think about it. Relax and think. When Mahatma Gandhi went to England to try to solve India's problems, he said, I'm doing this because a voice within me speaks. He meant something inside of him. You can call it a force, something magical, or anything else you want. Some people call it the subjective mind. Some people call it the subconscious mind. Some gut feeling. A thought that everyone has. Still others to the inner urges that come as hunches, messages from God. It's called a voice from beyond by spiritualists. It works every time, no matter what. Now I'll show you how to get it. A person talks. But first let me set the scene by drawing your attention to what happens when you repeat something. Take a gas knife as an example. You have seen them used to cut holes in steel or break up thick concrete. When you hit something with that tool, 
The huge force behind it breaks up the pieces and makes a dent or hole in the thing you're hitting. We have all heard of the old way of torturing people by dripping water on their face. You may already know about Kipling's boots. It's the sound of boots, boots, boots that drives men crazy. It's the steady, never-ending repeat that gets through. You know what the first part of the picture means and how repeat works with things that are made of matter. But some of you might not fully grasp the second part. But in this case, too, it's the repeat that leaves an effect on the mind. Repetition is the most important part of selling because it makes people want to buy something. A hundred others, all of which are etched into your mind by repeated exposure. By repeating things over and over, you learn how to grow. Everything you've ever learned was ingrained in your mind by repeating it over and over. You are constantly being told to renew your faith in your religious belief. Again and again, the same science is said. Reaffirmed, repeated, and repeated. It's easy for the aware mind to connect with the subconscious or emotional mind. Everyone who studies the subject knows what can be done by really getting in touch with the mind. Reiteration, also called repeat, helps you get a clear, detailed picture in your conscious mind. When you make the subconscious mind click, you have amazing power at your command. The study of how to suggest things. A lot of people talk about how powerful suggestions can be. We all know how easy it is to get someone sick by telling them over and over that they don't look good, etc. People who break the law admit because they keep thinking about what they. And you'll see that everything in it is true. A lot of people are envious of the person who seems to be getting ahead and making a lot of money. Did you ever try to find out why? Positive things that people have ever done have come from inside them. Envy is bad. Do. It's possible for everyone to reach their goals if they keep my saying in mind, if you believe it, it's so. And the old proverb, where there's a will, there's a way. This means that you need to have faith, belief, and willpower working all the time, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And I promise that if it's done, you will leave the people around you behind as quickly as high frequency. Electrical shocks move through the air. Don't say anything right now. Think about what planned advertising is. There is nothing else but a well-thought-out plan to get you to believe. It worked during the war, and if you're fully aware of what's going on around you, you know that it's still working in every area of life today, just like it did thousands of years ago and always will. When you read the newspaper or listen to the radio, you'll remember my main point. You'll understand that all of these talks our leaders and top executives give us on a daily basis are meant to make us believe. Those guys know how to do it. Stop. Think about it. Relax and think. When Mahatma Gandhi went to England to try to solve India's problems, he said, I'm doing this because a voice within me speaks. He meant something inside of him. You can call it a force, something magical, or anything else you want. Some people call it the subjective mind. Some people call it the subconscious mind. Some gut feeling. A thought that everyone has. Still others to the inner urges that come as hunches. Messages from God. It's called a voice from beyond by spiritualists. It works every time, no matter what. Now I'll show you how to get it. A person talks. But first let me set the scene by drawing your attention to what happens when you repeat something. Take a gas knife as an example. You have seen them used to cut holes in steel or break up thick concrete. When you hit something with that tool, the huge force behind it breaks up the pieces and makes a dent or hole in the thing you're hitting. We have all heard of the old way of torturing people by dripping water on their face. You may already know about Kipling's boots. It's the sound of boots, boots, boots that drives men crazy. It's the steady, never-ending repeat that gets through. You know what the first part of the picture means and how repeat works with things that are made of matter. But some of you might not fully grasp the second part. But in this case, too, it's the repeat that leaves an effect on the mind. Repetition is the most important part of selling because it makes people want to buy something. A hundred others, all of which are etched into your mind by repeated exposure. By repeating things over and over, you learn how to grow. Everything you've ever learned was ingrained in your mind by repeating it over and over. You are constantly being told to renew your faith in your religious belief. Again and again, the same science is said, reaffirmed, repeated, and repeated. It's easy for the aware mind to connect with the subconscious or emotional mind. 
Everyone who studies the subject knows what can be done by really getting in touch with the mind. Reiteration, also called repeat, helps you get a clear, detailed picture in your conscious mind. When you make the subconscious mind click, you have amazing power at your command. The study of how to suggest things. A lot of people talk about how powerful suggestions can be. We all know how easy it is to get someone sick by telling them over and over that they don't look good, etc. People who break the law admit because they keep thinking about what they did. As a reporter for a newspaper, I've been to a lot of third-degree meetings. Detectives and lawyers have sat down with one person and asked them questions over and over again until their face was drenched in sweat. The dangerous repeat, the reiteration, the tap, 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 through the power of suggestion, is what gets people to admit. Smart attorneys and defense lawyers always play to the feelings of the jury, never to their rational side. How do they do it? All they have to do is keep saying and stressing the things they want to stress. They do it by using different words and different ways to argue. It's all because the subconscious mind is being tapped over and over again, making people believe. Remembering this idea of repetition will help you understand why people of a certain race do so well in business. Business, business, business is what families talk about when they get together. The two of them talk about their issues. The idea of making money and moving forward is always in their minds. They are not allowed to forget at all. They stay together. The idea that came about because it had to, just like a machine or an item does. Necessity is the mother of invention, as the saying goes, and it's true of everything people do and want to do. A man in the water grabs at a straw, a hungry man at a piece of bread. When you push against it, the urges come. People who have been there know what they had to count on when things got really tough. There is no doubt that once you decide to do something, you will do it, even if you didn't hear a little voice inside you. But the problem with most of us is that we don't decide what we want or clearly see the path we want to take. If we kept our dreams and hopes in front of us all the time, let go of our fears, and got rid of all our doubts, ifs, and buts, everything would come true. A lot of us think we know what we want, but we don't really. It may sound strange, but if everyone knew what they wanted, they would get it if they had the drive, the energy, the fight, and the courage to go after it. Where do you want to go so the first thing you should do is get determined? You can do this by telling yourself over and over, I will, I will, I will, and will, and will, and believing it. That's it. Before you know it, you'll have strong willpower that, along with the other things I'm about to talk about, will change everything and put you on the path to success. Obviously, if you don't want to make things better for yourself, you should stop reading this right now and burn it. The good news is that you can make progress if you want to. This is true no matter what you do for a living. Salesman, boss, plumber, writer, or anything else. For example, if you want money, love, to move up in society, to become a lawyer, or to become a doctor. It doesn't make any difference. With this power, you can get anything you want, from shoes to a house. Now what do you want? You can build on what you already have if you want to. Find a beautiful, clear picture of the thing or things you want. Set the exact amounts if it's more sales. No matter what you want. The love of a woman or the love of a man, a new suit of clothes or a new car, this system lets you get it, as long as the thing you want is morally right and the picture is clear and positive. He who knows how to plant will not have his plant pulled up. There is a Chinese sage who said, He who knows how to hold something shall not have it taken away. This quote was made in 600 BC. Once you have a clear picture in your mind, start using the tap-tap method I described. Repetition of that image in your inner mind is what will bring that little voice to life and tell you exactly and scientifically how to get what you want. As soon as it speaks, you should take action. Then, as you move, everything that is in, your way will vanish. Use this line of taps. The idea is to always have the picture or pictures in front of you to help you see and think about the things you want. Make word pictures of them on a few small cards. The size of a business card is handy. You should always have them with you and look at them as often as you can. Keeping in mind that the more you look at and think about the pictures, the stronger the effects become in your thoughts. 
As an idea, put one card above the mirror so you can see it when you shave in the morning. Allow the specifics of your dreams written on the card to grow as you keep shaping the mental pictures. Keep another card close by to look at while you eat lunch or dinner. Just before you go to sleep, use the cards again. Tap, 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 tap. Keep it up. But writing down your dreams won't help until you're sure that every detail of what you want will stay in your mind until it comes true. Use little cards. Remember that thinking the same thing over and over again makes the picture positive. Once you fully understand this, you will know why thought always happens in relation to its target. Take a moment to think. Where did the electric light, the sewing machine, the radio, the computer, the ship, the train, the car, and a million other useful things come from? All of them started out as ideas or pictures in men's minds before they came true. Everything on earth besides what nature makes or gives us is the result of long-term thinking. Thoughts that are strong draw. Thought touch with that something makes everything happen, with a few exceptions that happen naturally. A single thought that isn't followed up on, a flash that is thrown out or lost, is like a cork bobbing around aimlessly and without a reason. However, the same thought, the idea of what you want to stay the same, attracts something, like a magnet does. The magnet's pulling power goes up as its size and strength go up. And so it is with long-term thinking. It draws more things to it as it gets stronger. Just like how the sun's rays will burn a hole in a glass that is kept focused on one spot. Strong, long-lasting thought and a clear mental picture of something focused on it will also be linked. But you have to picture your item or goal in your mind as a real thing. Imagine that every part of the picture is real, just the way you want the thing or ideal to be. The chain will then connect itself, as if by magic. You should now read this again and again until it sticks in your mind. As an extra way to focus, use a mirror every day and look at yourself in it as often as you can. Look deep into your eyes until you can see the fire of excitement, the mountain cold, the iron determination that will replace your doubt and confusion. Know yourself well and keep telling yourself what you want and where you want to go. At some point, you will at least mentally see your deepest wishes reflected in the mirror and your daydreams will start to come true. Once you understand how this theme works scientifically, you'll know why so many powerful people have used the mirror idea so well. Do not let the pictures get away for a second once they are clearly defined. Use steel bands to hold them. Look in the mirror. So make use of everything that is called luck. Many men bet on her and win or lose everything as her wheels turn. But leave these gains as illegal and deal with what caused what. The governor of God in the will works and sings in a choir. You have chained the wheels of chance and will sit down from now on because you are afraid of how they will turn. Emerson's courage to be alone. Writing down your goals and looking at yourself in the mirror every day will help a lot. Soon you won't need cards or mirrors to make the pictures. You'll be able to tap into your subconscious mind without even thinking about it. I'm tell anyone, not even your closest friends or family, about your deepest hopes and dreams. Don't tell anyone. That's because if someone finds out what you're after, they may... Whether they're jealous or not, set up counter vibrations, put things in your way, and do other things to try to stop you. If barriers fall or are put in your way by chance, you can jump over or go around them while singing until no one hears you. Now remember that it is completely up to you what kinds of pictures you make, hold on to, and then make come true. Think about this. Where you are now is 100% where your thoughts have taken you. And where they take you tomorrow is also 100% where your thoughts have taken you. You are the boss of everyone. Always keep in mind that the only limit is the one you set for yourself. Don't forget that you begin with your thoughts. Never give up, even if it takes longer than expected to get some of the things you want. It took a long time to build Rome. Keep your faith and believe strong and keep tapping away. You will get many new things and the good things in your dreams will come true. Remember that you are the only thing that can stop you. It's true, I know it, and I believe it. There are people like me who think that everything is relative. It seems to me that if a man can make a dollar, he can also make ten. He can have ten outfits if he already has two. The only thing that is different is how much energy he is willing to use. 
This is true for getting 100 to 1000. After that, all that's left to do is add sifters. There is no limit to what a person can do or get if they set their minds on something and work towards it with all their might. Look inside. There is a spring of good inside and it will always bubble up if someone digs deep enough. There is an old saying that goes like this. Be careful how you use the power that is to be yours. If you use it for bad, it will come back to you and destroy everything you care about. That's why you should only use it to do good things for yourself and others and make people happy. Do not brag or talk about the good things you have done for other people. They'll say what they think. Keep thanking God that you are on your way. Okay, that's it. Only use it for good. What does personality mean? In what way do you feel when you're with someone who has personality? It holds you. What is it about him that makes you feel like he's always with you? It's just a dynamic force working with willpower to draw from the Hugh mental storehouse. People all over the world have this attitude. Some say it's just how they are. This power may be being used by them without realizing it. To put it another way, it was kind of push it on them. Things move when desire is paired with personality. Do you understand? I believe that selling stocks, books, clothes, insurance, electric service, and washing machines is the same as selling any other good, yourself or your ideas. I've learned that in order to get across a thought, I first had to believe in it. It had to be with me all the time until it became a part of me. I had to dream with it and eat with it. This is the old idea of repeating yourself. I know it works. If you want to sell goods, you need to know what you're talking about. The only way to do this is to do hard, smart, personal study. Last but not least, make sure you know what's going on in the world around you. You never know what a prospect might be interested in, and sometimes you have to talk about something completely unrelated to get his attention or your break. In light of this, I urge you to read the newspaper and other recent publications carefully. Read the main points of the day's news. I don't mean reading every detail of a murder or suicide. Get up, figure out what's going on with you, and understand. Keep up with what's going on in the world. People who know more about what they tell anyone, not even your closest friends or family, about your deepest hopes and dreams, don't tell anyone. That's because if someone finds out what you're after, they may, whether they're jealous or not, set up counter vibrations, put things in your way, and do other things to try to stop you. If barriers fall or are put in your way by chance, you can jump over or go around them while singing until no one hears you. Now remember that it is completely up to you what kinds of pictures you make, hold on to, and then make come true. Think about this. Where you are now is 100% where your thoughts have taken you, and where they take you tomorrow is also 100% where your thoughts have taken you. You are the boss of everyone. Always keep in mind that the only limit is the one you set for yourself. Don't forget that you begin with your thoughts. Never give up, even if it takes longer than expected to get some of the things you want. It took a long time to build Rome. Keep your faith and believe strong, and keep tapping away. You will get many new things, and the good things in your dreams will come true. Remember that you are the only thing that can stop you. It's true, I know it, and I believe it. There are people like me who think that everything is relative. It seems to me that if a man can make a dollar, he can also make ten. He can have ten outfits if he already has two. The only thing that is different is how much energy he is willing to use. This is true for getting a hundred to one thousand. After that, all that's left to do is add ciphers. There is no limit to what a person can do or get if they set their minds on something and work towards it with all their might. Look inside. There is a spring of good inside, and it will always bubble up if someone digs deep enough. There is an old saying that goes like this. Be careful how you use the power that is to be yours. If you use it for bad, it will come back to you and destroy everything you care about. That's why you should only use it to do good things for yourself and others and make people happy. Do not brag or talk about the good things you have done for other people. They'll say what they think. Keep thanking God that you are on your way. Okay, that's it. Only use it for good. What does personality mean? In what way do you feel when you're with someone who has personality? It holds you. What is it about him that makes you feel like he's always with you? It's just a dynamic force working with willpower to draw from the huge mental storehouse. 
People all over the world have this attitude. Some say it's just how they are. This power may be being used by them without realizing it. To put it another way, it was kind of push it on them. Things move when desire is paired with personality. Do you understand? I believe that selling stocks, books, clothes, insurance, electric service, and washing machines is the same as selling any other good, yourself, or your ideas. I've learned that in order to get across a thought, I first had to believe in it. It had to be with me all the time until it became a part of me. I had to dream with it and eat with it. This is the old idea of repeating yourself. I know it works. If you want to sell goods, you need to know what you're talking about. The only way to do this is to do hard, smart, personal study. Last but not least, make sure you know what's going on in the world around you. You never know what a prospect might be interested in, and sometimes you have to talk about something completely unrelated to get his attention, or your break. In light of this, I urge you to read the newspaper and other recent publications carefully. Read the main points of the day's news. I don't mean reading every detail of a murder or suicide. Get up, figure out what's going on with you, and understand. Keep up with what's going on in the world. People who know more about what they want are better able to get it. Remember that getting smarter gives you power. That's something you should all know by now. People who know other people well are smart, but people who know themselves well are wise. Expand your information, and the things you can do will become bigger and better. You will naturally want bigger and better things. This means that the things you thought you wanted will become unimportant to you, and you will stop caring about them. This is another way of saying that you will eventually hitch your wagon to a star. When you do, you'll be able to move very quickly, work, study, and become very good at noticing things. Then step on the gas and come alive for yourself, and you'll pass it on to the other person. Get excited and sure of yourself, and you'll be fine. All around you, up like vibrations. The idea behind all life is as old as the world itself. Like leads to more like. When you do a good deed, someone else will do a good deed too. Riches breed riches, love breeds love, and so on. According to Ampere's theory of electrical magnetism, the old law of attraction says that parallel currents going in the same direction attract each other. On the other hand, if you are out of tune and hostile, you make others out of tune and hostile as well, since parallel currents going in opposite directions repel each other. That being said, don't think that I've given you a giant wishbone that will allow you to sit down and get what you want by talking to yourself over and over again. That will never work. The wishbone needs to be backed up by a backbone. That's not all. The wishbone and the backbone need to work together and be in sync so that they work perfectly together. And when they are in sync, personality will start to grow. Then, put your plan into action and energy, and everything will go according to plan. Wishbones need strong bones. I think we've all liked that kind of passionate person. Which person did you see? The one whose chest is out, head is up, and eyes are wide open. It is easy to spot people in any group whose shoulders sag, their chins hang down, and their eyes are dead. People who drift, slack off, or quit. First, take a size. Next, look at the people you are close to. This will help you tell almost instantly who will make progress and who will fail. Every move you make has a story to tell. During a two-way interaction, each leaves a mark on your identity, body, and mind. Each move has an effect on the others. Your face emotions and body language show what you're thinking. Now look at yourself again with your eyes closed in the mirror. The other person sees the same person you do. In what way do you want to catch his attention? You can choose that too. You know if you have a personality or not. If something is missing or not grown, resolve to obtain it. You can, and you will, if you decide to do what is written here. You will soon be able to see the determination in your eyes if you work hard to focus on your goal and stay determined. Some people say that someone has an intense gaze, which means that he looks right through you. What does it look like? It's just that fire from the inside passion, or whatever you want to call it. The person who looks into that person usually gets what they want. Don't forget that the eyes show what's inside. Look at the pictures of guys who are doing well. If you look closely, you'll see that all of their eyes are that intense. Because of this, I say, 
Let it show in the way you walk and carry yourself. And soon enough, people will be able to feel you when you walk through a crowd. And a prospect who is truly unique will feel that when you talk to him. It's in the eyes. All of this is meant to show that you need to be a positive type to move forward. Additionally, the things I've talked about can help you become a positive type. The bad person is doomed before he even starts. It is said that nature takes care of these things because the best survive. As far back as Sparta, children were left alone when they were very young, and only those who lived were given another chance. That person is a negative type. To put it another way, someone who quits is a negative type. There's no need to hit everyone on the nose just to get a fight going, but remember that being on the defense is a bad sign for business. You can't lick someone who doesn't want to be licked. If you find yourself on the defensive out of the blue, snap out of it and go on the attack because you'll lose if you stay put defensively. Of course, being in good health is required to reach this level of being. I'm not saying that the power of will can fix everything like broken legs, but I do know that someone who is sick will feel better if they keep using the idea I've just explained. You have all heard of Dr. Emile Couet, the Frenchman who came to this country a few years ago and told people that if they followed his plan, they could get better. He said that you should tell yourself every day I'm getting better and better. Think about that for a moment. That idea was always the same, and it never added anything new. Neither are the thoughts I present. This is just another way of saying the same thing, repeating what you want in your mind almost all the time, and those positive thoughts are then sent to your subconscious mind. If you think about the great thing, you will have health, wealth, and happiness. It can't be any other way. We've all heard of people who are always complaining about back pain, headaches, or other aches. They keep bringing them up, and all of a sudden, the aches become real. You don't need to talk about that ache or pain if you have it. It doesn't help to talk about your fears and problems either. Don't think or talk about them. After that, you won't think about them. They stay there because they hear it over and over. Change gears, go the other way, stop focusing on the bad, and turn into an optimistic person. As soon as you think positively, all of your pain, worries, and problems go away. If thou art pained by any external thing, it is not this thing which disturbs thee, but thy own judgment about it, and it is in thy power to wipe out this judgment. Now, if anything in thy own disposition gives the pain, who hinders thee from correcting thy opinion? The Wisdom of Ages when a train speeds across the track in front of you, you stop your car, shift into neutral, and let the engine run at idle. As soon as the train goes by, you're back on your way. You don't put your car in reverse, though, and go backwards. Are you going backwards? Think of yourself as the gears in your car. Put all of your fears, worries, problems, aches, and pains backwards. If something goes wrong, just hit the brakes and let the engine stop until you can see the road ahead clearly. Everything you want is in high, health, wealth, happiness, and success. You are the only thing that can put your car's gears in reverse. Your own gears may go backwards sometimes, but remember that you put them there with your own thoughts. Because there is no good or bad, what you think makes it so. So, based on what you think, you move either fast forward or slowly backward. You use the tap-tap idea to bring about the things you most want to avoid when you put yourself in reverse, worry, stew, and fret. Approximately 3,500 years ago, Job said, For the thing that I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I too was afraid of has come up to me. They definitely came upon him because he imagined them in his fear. He used an unchangeable rule to draw them to him, just like how positive thoughts can help you attract good things into your life. You bring bad things, the things you fear, into your life by keeping up the worry and the bad thoughts. Us forward. As long as this is taken in the spirit it was meant to be taken, you will be unbeatable. The world is yours if you get in tune and get other people on track. There is nothing that can be done when fear controls the mind. But once a man gets rid of fear, the world is open for business. Though losing a little cash isn't a big deal, losing hope, nerve, and drive is what really hurts men. Mr. Herbert N. Carson
If you know exactly what you want and follow the steps given, you will find that more doors open for you than you ever thought possible. Insights from the prophets are not interesting to me. I'm interested in progress. It will dawn on you, and you'll be able to see right away how to get what you want. It works for any line because the same rules and techniques can be used. The level of expert knowledge you have and how determined you are to do something are the only things that will allow you to reach your goal. Read and learn, practice, practice, and tap, tap, tap. Before I end, I want to let you know that in order for the conscious mind to get ideas from the subconscious or subjective mind, it needs to be open to them. We all know that the conscious mind is what thinks, feels, and figures out things. The mind below doesn't do any of these things. It only sends thoughts to the conscious mind. Let's go. A lot of people have told you to play your hunches. What are those hunches? Where are they from? They come from how the mind works in the background. According to psychologists, you'll soon figure out why. That to get the mind ready to receive, you need to calm down. You know what I mean if you've ever been on a massage table and been told to let go by the masseur. Let the body fall apart. If it's hard at first, try it with one arm, then both arms, then both legs, until your whole body is relaxed. Your mind will then relax on its own. Pay attention to what you want once that is done. After that, come hunches. Take them. Do what the little voice tells you to do. Do not argue or try to reason. Just do what you are told right away. Sit back and tap. When you want to access your subconscious and hear your little voice, you will understand what psychologists, mystics, and students mean when they tell you to calm down, stop thinking, and do nothing. As you go further, you'll understand what the Eastern seers meant when they said, be at ease, meditate, and go into the great silence. Continue to meditate, and your problems will fade into nothingness. The road ahead will become clear, and your burdens will fall away one by one. Is there anything more clear than Pilgrim's Progress? What I want to say is the same as what was said there. But, as I already said, I may have said it in a different way. According to the late Thomas A. Edison, I begin by using my accumulated knowledge, but most of my inventions are completed with ideas that flash into my mind out of thin air. Fred Art and Charles Daly worked with Mr. Edison for more than 50 years and figured out how to make synthetic rubber, which was the mysterious nothingness. The quote comes from a news story from October 21, 1931. On Monday, he, Mr. Edison, started to sink into a stupor, but Daly and Art were still pounding doggedly, determinedly concentrating, tap, 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 at their experiments. And on Tuesday night, the solution flashed out, mysterious nothingness. The little voice spoke, just like it always does when you make up your mind what you want and when you go after it. If your own little inner voice suggests that you ask for something, do not be backward about asking. You have nothing to fear. The other person will never help unless he knows your wishes, so you must ask. Accept the theory advanced herein and practice intelligently, and the voice will speak, just like it did for Edison, Art, Daly, and thousands of others, and you will get results. All will be yours. In Julius Caesar, Cassius, of the lean and hungry look, talking to Brutus of the Roman Emperor's power, said, The fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves, that we are underlings. As you know, William Shakespeare wrote that, and he himself arose above the commonplace by using this power. It's your fault if you are shy, behind the times, stuck, and a pushover. Do not put the blame on the stars, on people, or on the world. You're to blame. I'll say it again. Switch to high gear and get moving. Who is at fault? Some people may say that you are cocky, self-centered, or selfish, because they don't fully understand. Don't care what they say, though. You know who they are, the scoffers, those who would block your path with rocks and other things. People who understand will be useful. They'll be excited to help you. Smart ones will start to look at you to see what you have that they don't, and to try to figure out your secret. You now have a handle on it. Take a firm hold of it and start moving forward author and critic George Jean. 
Nathan says in a collection of living philosophies, he has never known a man who succeeded in life in a material way who did not think of himself first, last, and all the time. I'm not sure what Nathan meant by that, but I'm sure he didn't mean that a successful man is so self-centered that he doesn't help other people. When you follow the theme the way I've described it and start to succeed, you won't be driven to be cruel. Giving service pays off. In fact, the opposite will happen. You will want to do kind things for other people. Providing services that involve, in a sense, throwing out crumbs and being willing to do something nice for the other person, which will make him want to do something for you. This is not selfish in any way. It's just a matter of how things happen. Do not forget about the laws of attraction. Like always brings like. People who do a service will get paid a lot of money. There's no doubt about it. That's just how it is. I am in charge of my own life. I'm in charge of my own soul. What a person thinks in his heart, that is what he is. I understand. I think so. That's right. It is said that this little book will do everything for you. But you need to read it again and again until you fully understand every sentence and word. Then you have to put the rules and mechanics into practice with all your heart. Include them in your daily life. And when you use the ideas given, they will work the same way they always have and always will. You will find the whole plan very easy to follow if you are very honest with yourself. You will understand the huge power of the science of thought repetition and positive action once you have read the book and thought about the ideas it contains. If you think the same thought over and over, you can tap yourself up or down, depending on whether your thoughts are negative or positive. Along with getting stronger, you will find that your thoughts can affect other people. As a result, I want to warn you again to be very careful not to abuse your power. Make sure you think good, helpful thoughts all the time. Then use all of your energy to do something. As the ideas come to you, keep in mind that every thought that stays with you leads to action, and results come after. Keep this book and read it over and over. Read it again and again and again until you understand it. Everything was fine at first. They were bad because of people. If you do bad things, bad things will happen to you. You will get good things back when you do good things. You can have everything you want and be anything you want if you are ready to put in the time, thought, effort, and energy. You now have the key to getting everything you want. Good luck with everything you do from now on.